I love the chase and the hunt and I set the pace when I'm running. I always take what I want and I always give it 100. Don't need a bank, no, I'm funded. Play the game like it's nothing. I'm always thankful for something. Don't take for granted, stay humble. Now waiting, better believe in your mind, cause it's everything. You can mold, shape, find almost anything. Hey everybody, this is Praxis, and in this video I'm going to be going over this device. This is a UVC sterilizer. Uh, I recently made a video about general hygiene because cold and flu season is coming up, and tangentially I made a, me a mention of this being something that we use uh, to try to prevent ourselves getting sick, and we've been 100% successful. The past four years since uh, COVID came out, we've been 100% successful in avoiding any colds or flus or drippy noses or COVID or anything else during cold and flu season for the past four years. Uh, prior to that, uh, it was just sort of a um, a ritual every year. I figured, well, it's like cold and flu season. Of course, you're going to get a cold and flu. And every single year I got at least a, one cold or a couple colds and maybe a flu thrown in there for good measure. I just felt that, that was part of being alive. It's like, you know, you're always going to get sick during cold and flu season. What would cold and flu season be without colds and flus? Um, I didn't realize until COVID uh, came about and I started taking some precautions that it was actually completely discretionary. And I felt like a little bit of a dumbass at that point, kind of like the guy that finally gets introduced to toilet paper after having like butt rashes for <laughs> years someone's like hey you know you can try this you can wipe stuff off your butt and I'm like wow this is wonderful and it definitely is wonderful not getting sick anymore so if you'd like to uh, try to emulate a little bit of that in your life uh, there are different things you can do one is just kind of staying away from people who are sick when I do go out occasionally I'll have a mask if I feel like I'm gonna be in an area where there's gonna be a bunch of sick people I don't go crazy about them and I don't like you know give other people a hard time if they don't want to wear them but I feel like that's an extra little layer and the uh, the third thing that I do uh, in addition to just trying to keep my immune system up and we're going to talk a little bit about that at the end of this video with an object that's in here. Uh, a third thing you can do is sterilize stuff as it's coming into your house. You know, like washing your hands and washing mail that's coming in and washing groceries. Now, that's something that we picked up right at the beginning of COVID with sterilizing groceries. We started using bleach and boy, was that messy and time consuming and... There are a lot of downsides of using bleach, in addition to the idea that if you're a prepper, you like the idea that you can st uh, stack stuff ahead of time, put it on your, you know, in your storage, put it on your, uh, in your uh, pantry and, and have it for the future. And while uh, expiration dates on lots of things like food are, you know, kind of just suggestions. In fact, I'll routinely eat things like years or even decades past exp expiration dates. The expiration dates on bleach are actually fairly uh, accurate and they do off gas their chlorine and just kind of turn into salt water over time. So in terms of like long term stuff, uh, you know, just stacking bleach in order to sanitize things doesn't really work all that great. So we've been using this. It is dry. You don't get your hands wet. It's easy. It's quick. Uh, and uh, it's pretty inexpensive. Uh, for this device that I uh, put together here, uh, the only things that cost really anything are the wire rack shelving itself. I just got it at a hardware store. And I went with the silver shelving just because it's like it reflects light a little bit more, you know, because you want it all mirrors on the inside. And the other thing that costs, you know, something is uh, the bulbs. Uh, this is a UVC bulb. There are different types of UVC bulbs. I'm going to put a link down in the description below to the type that I use. Uh, the, the two basic types that you're going to see out there are ones that create ozone and ones that say that they're ozone free. Now, uh, for for these lights to tear apart virus bodies, and that's what they do, they, the high energy light rips the virus bodies apart. For them to do that, they need to be operating at a wavelength, which I don't know offhand, I'm not gonna say it. I think it was like 200 something, 250 something or something, <laughs> it could be like way off from that. But they operate at a specific wavelength, and that wavelength also, in addition to tearing uh, virus bodies apart, also tears apart oxygen molecules. The oxygen that you and I are breathing right now, uh, it's not just a single oxygen atom floating around in our air. It uh, usually comes together as a molecule, as an O2 molecule. That's two oxygens stuck together. Now, uh, when the light hits it, it breaks those apart. And uh, as you get this stew of, you know, single oxygen atoms, sometimes they kind of recombine and you get them uh, clumping together in uh, O3, three oxygen atoms together. That's also known as ozone. And while ozone is a wonderful thing to have in the upper atmosphere for blocking solar radiation uh, from getting down to the ground, it's not the kind of thing you want to have in your lungs. So, why do I use bulbs that create ozone when there's ones that say that they are ozone free? Well, the reason is because uh, creating the ozone is a guarantee that you're operating at that wavelength. The ozone free ones allegedly, and this is the, <laughs> that's the important word, allegedly, operate at the wavelength where they are tearing apart uh, the oxygen atoms and the virus bodies, but also emit at another wavelength, which breaks apart the ozone so that it can kind of recombine as, uh, as O2 uh, atoms. Uh, I'm sorry, O2 molecules. And that 
sounds great, and if it's true, that's great. But the thing is, is that when I set this up, I bought a UVC meter to confirm that all of these were operating at the right wavelength. Those meters are not cheap. I think this meter costs, it was like $500 to buy the meter. But, you know, I, I didn't want to put this whole thing together and not even know whether it worked. I, that's my job to have to buy those expensive meters so I can test things and then let you guys know what are the things that work so you don't have to buy the meter. Um, but I realized later that uh, the ozone is kind of like a free meter that confirms that your light bulbs are still working at that kind of, uh, that proper uh, wavelength. Uh, and having that and having the, the smell of ozone in the air lets you know that the things inside are actually working. So while the ozone free ones might and probably are working, what if you buy like some dud one and it just, it's, it's kind of a blue light and that's the end of it and it doesn't actually do anything. So if you want to confirm that the stuff is actually tearing apart virus bodies, get something that is also tearing apart the oxygen molecules and you can confirm that with the ozone smell, which you don't want to breathe. You want to do it in kind of an area where you can vent it out. If you can run a fan in that room, that's great. The ozone itself is just going to break down on its own with the sunlight. Sunlight breaks the ozone back down and that's why I run this thing for one reason. Uh, I run this thing out in our greenhouse because we got plenty of sunlight in here. We also have you know, plenty of fresh air and it's not inside of our house, but it's something to uh, keep in mind. So anyway, the things that are involved in putting this together, some kind of a, a, a rack, and I would do it with two shelves uh, so you can have lights on the bottom and lights on the top when you're placing things in there get some of these bulbs. These are just regular ones that screw into a, I think it's called like E26, that kind of socket. It's like the regular uh, socket that uh, screws into your uh, your household uh, fixtures. I'm gonna screw this guy back in here. When you have bulbs like this, you don't wanna be touching the glass in them. As much as you can avoid uh, doing that, it's, it tends to be a good thing because when you get oils on them, it can make them fail a little bit or, uh, uh, earlier. So uh, I, in this box, I've got six UVC lights. I, I ain't messing around. I, I could probably be fine with like one or two in here, but having six, it does it really fast. And I, each one of these bulbs, I think they're less than 30 watts each, I believe. Um, so all of them together, it's like, uh, well, like, let's say they are 30 watts. So it's like 90 and 90, it's like uh, you know, 180 watts or something like that. That might seem like a lot of wattage, but the thing is, is that you don't have to, it's not like you're running this thing all day. Uh, we're gonna put things in here, close it up. I leave it on for about 30 seconds. So it's like, you know, less than 200 watts for 30 seconds. And uh, you know, then you open the thing up. And uh, that's really all there is to it in terms of cost. I just have these little uh, spring clamp, uh, uh, screw in uh, light uh, receptacles that I, I put in here and they just kind of clamp around it. Uh, the surface of this is just covered in aluminum foil and the sides are just made out of cardboard. I have aluminum foil on top and aluminum foil on the bottom too. And I'm noticing this gets starting to be some debris here. I probably want to brush that off so it'll uh, stay being uh, reflective. Uh, but the idea is you want to just get uh, you know, foil on all the surfaces so that it is, uh, you know, reflect, taking all the light and wrapping it all around everything you put in there. You want it to be closable uh, and uh, you want to have some kind of a switch for turning these uh, on. I have all of these lamps wired down to a little uh, power switch down here, uh, just a, like a, a power strip with an on off uh, button in it. And once it's closed, I turn it on, let it run for about 30 seconds. I, I honestly never time it. Uh, let it run for about 30 seconds, turn it off, open it up, take a breath before I open it up because when you open something like this up, you get like that whoosh of ozone in your face. So you don't want to be breathing while that happens. Let it kind of dissipate or blow away. Um, and then unload it and then load it up with new stuff. And that's all there really is to it. It's super easy. You don't get your hands dirty. And, uh, you know, in terms of, um, you know, energy usage, it's really, it's, it's not that much because, you know, you're only running it for just a few seconds. So that is my UVC sanitizing box. And, you know, between that and not hanging out with sick people and occasionally doing a mask when I go out, um, we haven't been sick in four years. So, you know, some or one or all of these uh, little legs of my stool are, are functioning. And the other leg of the stool, the fourth leg, if you will, uh, is uh, you know, keeping a healthy immune system, getting proper rest, getting proper nutrition. And another thing is, this is, I'm a big fan of this, is uh, eating raw garlic. And well, during cold and flu season, I'll just do one of these uh, each day. And, you know, I know that there was a lot of controversy over whether eating raw garlic is, um, uh, has any effect on the immune system. But the nice thing about doing things like this is, let's say this has absolutely no benefit uh, to my immune health whatsoever. Like all, all, all the anecdotal information is wrong. All the, the little scientific studies that suggest that this is helpful are wrong. Uh, what are the downsides? Well, I'm getting a, like a vegetable into my diet. So it's like, I, I like things like that where it's like, even if they're maybe not working, it's like, 
it's not, it, it's not a problem anyway, and I'm getting a vegetable in my diet. Now, how do I eat raw garlic? Um, the way I eat raw garlic, uh, because I, I don't particularly like the taste of garlic, is I'll do it with juice. Uh, this is just some grapefruit juice. I think grapefruit juice is really great because it's got a really strong taste. That's what I like to do. Any kind of a juice with a strong taste is going to be good. And what I do, and I, I'm going to have to say it before I do it because my mouth's going to be full in a moment, and you can watch me go through the process, is I'm going to take kind of a mouthful of this, not like a huge mouthful, but just enough to kind of fill my mouth. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the garlic in my mouth and I'm gonna use my teeth to kind of like nibble some bits off of the end. I'm kind of like chup, 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 and, and get little chunks of it in my mouth. And the fact that I've got the juice in my mouth already makes it so the, uh, the flavors from the garlic and the oils don't like just immediately go crazy all over my mouth. And it's, you know, you can taste that there's some garlic in there, but it's not like if I just threw this in now and was like, oh, and then like my whole mouth is just on fire with that. Uh, so I do that and then I just swallow that down. Now I'm not gonna do the whole clove of garlic uh, because that'd be hard to swallow, you know, all those little chunks. And also that's kind of a lot. I'd probably give myself a stomach ache if I you know down that much garlic uh, all at once but you can watch the process right now and you know I think this is another thing that really helps and you know some people joke and they might be right that the reason that this helps me to not get sick is because I got garlic breath and nobody wants to you know get close to me so it's like I they maintain their own kind of six foot thing not that the six foot thing is uh, particularly it's not like that's a magic number six feet or whatever it's like you know if you breathe in viruses you know they could come from six and a half feet or seven feet away you know whatever it, you got to use discretion about what environments you go into and what kind of people you're hanging out with but you know maybe I'm, I'm creating a bubble around myself with my garlic breath but the thing is usually what I do is I I will go out, I'll be in an environment where I'll be around people that I'm like, oh man, I, I wish I hadn't gotten so close to and gotten to that person's breath zone. So I'll go home and I'll do this afterwards. So the idea is this stuff uh, happens um, after the fact. So the garlic breath happens at, in the privacy of my own home. Here we go. And that's it. And right now, I, there's a, the lightest taste of garlic, but mostly I just feel, uh, taste like I got grapefruit juice in my mouth. So keep up your immune health. And try, you know, honestly, try not to politicize this stuff. You know, it, it, it's a real shame. It's terrible the way that, uh, you know, the COVID response was executed because it just pit people against each other. It made, everybody was just ended up virtue signaling. I mean, they're, they're like, the, the, you know, the dumb asses that drive around alone in their car with a mask because like, you know, that's the right thing to do. And, uh, you know, the people with their, you know, their blue band-aids or, or whatever, because that was the right thing to do. And, it, you know, it's, it's almost like, it's like, uh, like a sports team. It's like, what sports team are you on? Are you the one that's, that wants to have all these medical interventions or are you the anti-medical intervention sports team? And what it really should be about is just like, do you want to get sick? And if you don't, do some things to try to, uh, try to avoid that because it's terrible that people have been put in a situation where uh, to to try to advocate for your own health and to try to not get sick uh, puts you in a category with people that are like you know the virtue signalers and, and uh, on the flip side uh, you know he, here uh, in our family we weren't uh, into uh, you know doing the <coughs> route uh, it seemed like it kind of seemed to me like you can't get long-term um, data without long-term testing and uh, you know given the the situation around that particular disease that was going around, it didn't seem like it was that big of an emergency situation where it's like, I don't care, just put anything in there. So, you know, we held off from that, but you know, that puts us into kind of like a political cloud where, you know, suddenly it's, you know, we're the kind of people that are against like any kind of medical intervention in a lot of people's eyes. And it's terrible that, that things were politicized uh, in that way. Like, if you think about it, if, uh, if Donald Trump had had another couple of years in office and he had been the one that came, uh, was like presiding while uh, this was going on and he was the one that was, uh, you know, telling people that, because uh, he ultimately did, he was saying, you know, people should get vaccinated and people, uh, you know, should st you know, stay out of public spaces. He, th that was where he was, where he got to. If he had been the person in charge and he was the one delivering that message, you know, our society would be like kind of flipped upside down where it'd be like all the people that think they're conservatives would be the ones, you know, all wearing the mask. And if you think about it, prior to COVID, it was the people that hated surveillance that wanted to have the right to wear a mask. Uh, you know, when they went out into public, they didn't want their face getting scanned by cameras. You know, the very same people that were all like, you know, I, I have a right to wear a mask were, were, you know, many of the same people who were, you know, saying, like, I'm not going to wear a mask. Um, so, you 
you know, if Trump had been in office, uh, you know, during the first couple of years of COVID, you know, it would have been all the liberals that would have been like, you know, we don't trust these you know, giant pharmaceutical companies. And, you know, we're, you know, we're, we're not just going to let the government push us around and tell us what to inject into our bodies. So, you know, it, people ended up taking a stance not on what they really believed and not on what was sensible. It was just because, like, my team is against this and my team is for this. Make decisions on your own. Don't just do the opposite of what anyone tells you to. And don't just do, you know, uh, the affirmative, the, you know, the positive of what anyone tells you to, uh, to do. Because, you know, people are wrong. People got agendas. And, you know, just think for yourself and think about what's appropriate for you. And don't give other people a hard time about it either. You know, if you are someone that wanted to get the vaccine, don't give people who didn't want to get the vaccine a hard time about it. And if you're somebody that, you know, uh, you know doesn't want a mask, don't give people who want, uh, want to put a mask on a hard time about it. You know, everyone can just make their own choices. You know, there's a dumbass person that, you know, you know, drives around in the car by themselves with a mask. And then you get the other dumbass person that like says like, oh, viruses don't even exist. And I'm gonna like, you know, sn sniff and lick, lick this dog's butt <laughs> to prove some kind of political point. That sounds crazy, but I bet somebody's done, done that. You know, you get these uh, crazy people on either end of the, uh, the spectrum, but you know, the vast majority of us just don't like being sick and don't like being bossed around, you know, right? Don't like being sick, don't like being bossed around. You don't have to choose between one or the other. You don't have to be like, well, I don't like being bossed around, so I'm gonna have to get sick to prove a point. Or I don't like getting sick, so I'm gonna allow myself to be bossed around to prove a point. You do you, do what you think is best, try to gather information, and make, and make decisions. And don't just do the knee-jerk reaction, whatever people tell you to do or not to do. That's it, if you wanna make one of these, not super expensive, rack, few light bulbs, link them down in the description below to the ones I use, aluminum foil, cardboard, cardboard some tape, and a power strip if you want to really pimp it and make it easy to turn on and off with one uh, bu uh, button push. And remember, uh, with the ozone, uh, take that seriously. Don't breathe that stuff into your uh, lungs. If you need to run this in a room with like uh, the door closed and a window open, you can do that. Um, but um, you know, uh, other than that, it's, uh, it seems like it works really, really well. And uh, it's a heck of a lot uh, tidier and easier to do than uh, bleach washing of everything was. Thanks for watching. Hey YouTube preppers, here's another video that you might enjoy. But before you click on it, I wanted to take a moment to thank all the people you see listed on the screen. They help to support the work that I do here over at Patreon.com. If you'd like to join them and have your name added to that list, the link's below.